And I'd like to turn your attention to the individual well today. The Heiko, Majestic Consulting, Hamilton Saltwater Disposal Lease. The location of the well, I'm sure many of you know that, but that's where it's located. Just to the south, just outside city limits. Permit of the majestic well it was permitted under statewide rule of mountain. It was permitted for the commercial disposal of oil and gas. And the waste is going to be injected into the interval according to the permit that was submitted or the application that was submitted to the Railroad Commission between 5,000 feet and 10,000 feet below the ground surface. I'd just like to emphasize 5,000 feet. From where I'm standing right now to the Heiko City Hall, that's about a mile. That's, that's about 5,000 feet. So th this is a deep well where the injection is going to take place, compared, especially compared to the 420 feet of usable quality water that needs to be protected. The well is permitted to dispose into the deeper Ellenberger Formation. That's what it must dispose into. Uh, it's carried for bookkeeping reasons into the shallower part of Shales because the elevator for this area doesn't have a designation of the railroad commission. There's been two opportunities for. Sir, did you want me to respond to that? Or just keep going? Sir, if it won't take long, let him go through his uh, presentation and then we'll get back to the questions, okay? Don't mind that. Injection and disposal intervals, unlike production intervals, are not necessarily named in the Railroad Commission's proration section to be tracked. The reason is because it's not a reduce as well. What the uh, uh, operators do is they go to the nearest field or the nearest play and they associate the ejection interval and the permit for the well to the associated nearest play or nearest producing reservoir. The ejection, however, is based on the perforated depth at 5,000 to 10,000 feet. Therefore, the ejection will be in the Ellenberger and is not allowed in any other geographic strata except the Ellenberger. Thank you. Yes, sir. There's been two episodes of permitting. Uh, the first was the initial permitting, which began with notice in 517, carried forward with initial publication, the application filed with the Railroad Commission and a granting on 630. Then an amended permit was submitted to the Railroad Commission. That was on 614, with an amendment to the permit granted by the Railroad Commission on July 31st. Now, what did that amendment mean? Well, the amended permit increased the injection interval from the depth of 6,600 feet to 10,000 feet to 5,000 to 10,000 feet. So adding an additional 1,600 feet of interval that they could conceivably inject it. The amended permit also decreased the injection pressure. Because you're going shallower, the Railroad Commission will not let you inject at a, at a higher pressure because your shallowest is at uh, 5,000 feet now. Their injection pressure decreased from 3,300 PSI down to 2,500 PSI. The maximum daily injection volume remained at 30,000 barrels per day. At this well site, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality has stated that the deepest groundwater is at 420 feet at the well locations. Therefore, Railroad Commission rules require setting 420 feet of surface casing. The uh, surface casing in the Hamilton Saltwater Disposal Well on the permit application was to 1,000 feet was said to be submitted back to service with sufficient access to cement that exceeds the Railroad Commission requirements. The production casing, the second line of production, was to be submitted with 250 sacks of Class A cement from 5,000 feet where the well was being TD, and that would take it up to 4,008 feet. The production casing was also submitted with a DD tool, which is a type of tool that allows the casing to be opened at a shallower depth. This depth of 3,200 feet. Cement is then pumped out of that depth to ensure a good quality cement job. Cement always travels upwards. So from 3,200 feet with 1,350 sacks of Class A quality cement. The cement volume will fill the annulus with 
3,200 feet to the ground surface according to railroad commission calculations. The permit application then calls for 5,000 feet of the third layer of protection, three and a half inch tubing with the packet deck permitted at 5,000 feet. And that is the third layer of protection. Here's a schematic diagram of the well bore itself to try to show you. You can see the VUQG, base of usable quality groundwater, at 420 feet. You can see there's a sandy shale sequence, the approximate top of the bottom, <coughs> you get burnout shale, and the yellow burger formation. What I would like to emphasize is the dark is the casing and the light is the cement. If you look at 420 feet, you can see that is where the railroad commission require a setting. In this well, the casing went 1,000 or approximately 500 feet deeper to approximately 1,000 feet, and the permit calls for it to be cemented to surface. The next black line that goes all the way down goes all the way down to 5,000 feet to the Barnett Shale Interval. The Barnett Shale Interval had a multi stage cement jump. Remember, I talked about that DB tool. The first circulated in approximately 1,000 feet up the hole through the Barnett Shale. The second, from 3,200 feet, according to the permit calculations, to the surface. Then the final uh, hole was drilled out in the injection interval. That was permitted all the way down to a depth of 10,000 feet. Uh, it's my understanding that the operator uh, TD the well somewhere around 6,000, 6,500 feet, so it did not go all the way down to 10,000 feet. This is a schematic of what the Railroad Commission rules require. These rules have been in effect for the past 30 years. The Railroad Commission rules require two cement jobs and two straight casing strings at this depth. And you can see the casing and you can see the cement there. The next slide I'm going to show you is our schematic of what if the well follows its permit requirements, it will look like. And you can see there's a significant amount of casing and cement, more than Railroad Commission rules would require in this well. That concludes my prepared comments.